Hey guys, it's me, Rebecca. Are we not all loving this quarantine? Huh? Huh? No? Well, I'm not either. And I am really excited to get back to um, being able to leave my house, visit my friends, getting out of these shutdown measures. But as we all are probably thinking, with um, opening back up our communities comes a whole host of possible um, virus exposure. So I have been working really hard to put together a video for you on lots of research that's been done on things that you can do at home that actually do protect against virus exposure and again uh, fighting the virus after you've already gotten it. So exciting stuff here. I can't wait to share this good stuff with you. If you watch any video over the next couple of weeks, this might possibly be the one that will save you from being sick, might save you weeks of your time and your life and your health, right? Okay. So um, before we dive in, I have four categories of things like ways I want to organize this information I'm going to tell you so you know what's coming. The first is um, how do we keep a healthy immune system in the first place? What can I do if I'm not sick now to make it stronger? I have four pillars of a strong immune system share to share with you. Now what weakens your immune system? The third category I want to share with you is what to do when you actually get the dang thing and you start sneezing and coughing and you know something's, you've caught something that's coming on. And the fourth category I want to share with you um, is current research that's being done right now on COVID-19. And So, number one, what can we do to have a strong immune system right now? The first thing we can do is eat well. All right, you guys know that I love to talk nutrition, so here's the snippet for this video. Eating enough of our uh, micronutrients will help to protect us. We need to have comprehensive micronutrient adequacy, which means we basically need to eat enough varied um, phytochemicals that we can be strong and protected. We need a diverse group of these phytochemicals, which means um, vitamins and minerals and things like that from plants, in order to create a strong barrier against pathogens. It's it's kind of like if we don't have zinc or if we don't have vitamin B6, um, it's like making a fence without screws. So um, how do we do that? How do we make sure we're eating enough um micronutrients. Well, one of my favorite doctors I like to follow, Dr. Joel Furman, has a great acronym that he uses to describe all of the six foods that we should be eating every day, and that is G-bombs. And the foods um, include greens, beans, onions, um, mushrooms is the next category, so mushrooms. And the next category is berries. Like, who doesn't love to eat berries? We need to be making sure that we're getting in um, berries, cherries, or pomegranates um, a cup to half a cup every day. So that's the fun part of, of G-bombs. The last one is S, and it stands for seeds or nuts. And, and all of those have um, healthy fats and healthy proteins that our bodies need to have a strong defense on our outer, outer layer here. So how... Um, it's also important, not just that we eat um, greens every day um, and berries every day, but that we kind of change it up. So one day we might have spinach, the next day we're going to try bok choy. One day we're going to have blueberries, the next day marion berries. Um, in this meal I'm going to have chia seeds, but in the next meal I'm going to eat pumpkin seeds. So it's important to switch it all up. That's how we make sure that our, um, our, our micronutrients are adequate. Okay. I could go on and on about nutrition, but I won't. Just eat better, all right, all right. Okay, the next pillar of a strong um, immune system is sleep. And there was excellent research done in Pittsburgh that um, they took patients who had um, compromised sleep and exposed them to rhinovirus. And over the next couple of weeks, they noticed that poorer sleep efficiency um, and shorter sleep durations, even if you're getting great sleep, but it's only five hours, shorter sleep duration in the weeks after exposure were still associated with a lower resistance to the illness. The bottom line to that means if you aren't sleeping enough, you're more likely to get sick, all right? Okay, now the third pillar of a healthy immune system is stress management. Um, 
a meta-analysis, which means a really big study of lots of studies, all of them together show that um, stress that's temporary with like a fight or flight response, like to an exam um, or to um, spilling something that you have to clean up, like short, natural, um, temporary stress actually elicits potentially beneficial changes in your immune system. Whereas on the other hand, the more a stressor deviates from um, temporary and becomes more like chronic, then the components of the immune system can be compromised. So um, to be brief, um, natural short-term stress is helpful for your immune system, while chronic stressors are associated with suppressing um, both cellular and humoral. That means um, both your Pac-Man immune system and your antibody immune system. They both are suppressed by stress. So we need to learn how to manage stress healthfully, right? Okay, the fourth pillar of a healthy, strong immune system is getting moderate exercise. There's lots of studies done on how exercise boosts your immune system, but one of my favorites was done in the UK, and it showed that even a 30-minute walking period, like even the first time, that your immune system, your, your white blood cells are going to um, have increased mobilization. That means you'll have more guys controlling the perimeter, which is good. That's what we want. Um, they also showed that... Um, that's after one one time of exercising. They also showed that increase like um, regular exercise over a month's time um, reduces inflammation in your body, which helps your immune system too. So um, one time of exercising, good. Exercising steadily over a month, even better. Okay, so those are the four things that you can do to make sure that your immune system is up to snuff. But what am I doing that's weakening my immune system? Everyone's probably doing something. Weakening your immune system, um, there's lots of factors. I'll talk about four. One is if you have a weak cardiovascular system um, or per, poor circulation already. Those things um, put a weakness on your immune system. So what can you do about that? Well, you can exercise, you can take baths, you can get a massage. All of those things increase your immune system. So um, make sure that you, if you already have a weakness in that area, do everything you can to shore it up. Otherwise, you're going to have like a leaky hole in your um, outer barrier. We've talked about stress already. That's the second thing that reduces or hampers our immune system. Um, so what can you do about that? You can use lots of stress reduction measures, such as um, meditation, praying, breathing, like lots of different things you can do um, to reduce the amount of stress that you feel. One of my favorite things is to use a blend of essential oils called Adaptive that literally has essential oils that have handpicked. They have been studied to reduce the amount of stressors that we feel are perceived stress. Um, another thing that weakens your immune system is excess fat on the body. Now, this is really interesting. This is not something most doctors would tell you, but there is a growing body of evidence to support the idea that um, the more weight that we're carrying around on our frame, the harder our immune system has to work. And if you think about this logically, it makes sense. If um, you're a 150-pound individual, you have so much square footage of fence to build, right, against your viruses. If you have a 250-pound individual, there's 100 more pounds of fence to build around, right? So we're reducing our concentration of micronutrients. We're increasing how much square footage we have to cover with our perimeter. Um, basically, um, the higher our BMI, the weaker our immune system becomes because we're basically diluting it. So... Um, I totally understand using food as a crutch because I've needed that emotionally at different times in my life. But if you are ready to let go of that um, and move on to healthier patterns, I so want to help you do it because it is, it is incredibly satisfying for me to help another person break through um, this weight issue. So if you're ready, get with me. And, and, and if you don't want to do it with me, then at least at home, do your best to get your weight into a favorable zone. Okay. Now the fourth way that we reduce or weaken our immune system, our immune response is with sugar. 
So we've been saying this for a long time, but finally there is research to support that a high sugar diet induces aberrant activation of the innate immune system, including defects in phagocytosis and inflammation in the body. Let me tell you what that geek speak means. When we eat a high sugar diet, then um, the little pac mounds that go through our body and and gobble up viruses and vi or sorry um, cells that have been infected with viruses, those little pac mounds don't work as well. And also, there's tons more inflammation if we're eating sugar. So if you want to give your immune system the best fighting chance it can have, don't eat sugar. Dun dun dun! dun. Hey, I was right this whole time. <laughs> Okay, so now you know principles of a sick immune system and principles of a healthy one. Now, what happens if you're doing your best and you get sick anyways? All right, <clears throat> so using what we've already learned, we can tell we need sleep, right? So if we're sick, we need like extra sleep. Um, Dr. Furman says don't use an alarm clock. Um, get as much sleep as your body wants, and that's how you're going to recover. Um when it comes to food, um, it, when you are sick is not the time to be dousing with green smoothies and like trying to overload on nutrition. It's actually a time to eat lightly or even to fast. Um, Lynn Shinto, who's a naturopathic physician, says, um, we, you know, we all think of comfort foods like what do we do when we're sick? We like binge on ice cream and chicken noodle soup and things like that. Like, oh, it's okay. I just need to get in calories. Everything else sounds gross. That's not actually the best thing we can do when our body is sick. Um, so Lynn Shinto recommends um, lightweight things to eat, um, like shiitake and mushroom and miso soup, which, by the way, both of those have been proven. Um, mushrooms and miso or fermented foods have been proven to boost your immune system. So um, one particular study showed that eating miso um, and other um, probiotic foods um, actually st significantly makes a difference in your overall gut microbiome um, communities. So what that means is eating probiotic foods boosts your immune system in the long run. So um, taking a step back from heavy, dense foods and eating something light like miso soup or sauerkraut um, or a, a small salad or something like that, that is going to give your body a better defense. So <clears throat> make sure you're eating up on your probiotic foods. And if you don't know what probiotic foods are, a list would be miso, uh, sauerkraut, uh, kimchi, um, yogurts, and kefir. So um, that would be the thing to stock up on, right? Like that's what should be missing from the shelves in the grocery store. Um, so if you're, if you're getting sick, that should be your go-to food. Okay, what else to do when you're sick? Everyone like reaches for certain remedies on the shelf, right? Well, the remedies that have science behind them include zinc and vitamin C for micronutrients. And um, David Raker, MD, um, recommends eating um, or getting a little bit of zinc if he notices he's coming down with something, but you gotta hop on it. Like, like as soon as you notice it, you're not feeling well, go grab some zinc out of the grocery store shelf. Um, or everyone knows that I don't love supplements and I do love food. So I'm going to put up a picture here for you of um, different foods that are high in zinc that you can start eating when you feel like you're running on the, on the down low. All right, vitamin C, but we're not talking about thousands of um, thousands of units of vitamin C. We want like 500 or so. Uh, same with same thing with zinc. We only want like 10 to 20 uh, micrograms. If you overdo it, the reason I don't like um, the reason I don't like taking a supplement is because if you overdo it, that can actually have negative effects on your body as well. There's like a sweet spot. So what's the sweet spot? About 500 units of vitamin C a few times a day and 10 to 20 units of zinc um, a few times a day. So those are the micronutrients you can stock up on. Um, there are lots of great studies showing that um, herbs or um, supplements like Elderberry extract and Chinese herbs like buplarum and figwort can help fight against viruses. Um, specifically, they um, 
naturally occurring plant substances like tri uh, tri blah, naturally occurring plant substances that are found in these plants like um, triterpene glycosides um, such as in buplerum and figwort they exert antiviral activity specifically against covid viruses or against coronaviruses so that means that in the early stage of COVID infection, um, viral attachment and penetration can be halted and stopped if you're using these herbs. So once again, you got to catch it right in the beginning of when you're not feeling well in order to fight against um, coronaviruses with them. Another um, herb that could be used is echinacea. There's um, studies that are kind of like there's studies on one side of the fence and the other. Basically, you need to have a high enough dose of echinacea in order for it to be effective. Okay, one more thing you can do when you're sick it um, that's a natural virus protection is using essential oils there's so much research on essential oils and viruses one study shows that helichrysum is effective against HIV tea tree clove eucalyptus and rosemary are effective against herpes another study showed that um, rosemary eucalyptus um, and an unexpected one, clary sage, are all effective against respiratory viruses. So um, what I want to tell you about them is there's, there's significant research. In fact, more than the other remedies that I've showed you, even more than sleep, there's research showing that um, essential oils are effective against viruses. So how would I use them? One, way, one study showed that um, rinsing your mouth with oils like clove can actually reduce how much virus expulsion you have so if you are sick and you don't want someone in your house to get sick then rinsing with oils helps you saw me put a couple drops into this water I'm just gonna gargle it and spit it back out or if you're really brave you could gargle it and swallow it mm -hmm. it's not rocket science you want to get the oil all over inside um, in your mouth and that will help to reduce the amount of um, viruses that you are putting out you're emanating all right, another way you can use essential oils to help you um, during these times is you can take a drop or two in your hand. You can rub it in. This is great to do with rosemary or eucalyptus, and you can just breathe it in. <sighs> Breathing deeply like this with a funnel and a cup can get it really down deep into your lungs, exposing all of the surfaces in your respiratory system to um, natural bioactive substances from plants that help your body fight viruses. Okay, last but not least, I'm really excited to tell you about current study, like what's being done about COVID-19 right now. So there is a study that's ongoing, uh, a partnership between Arizona State and UCNM, which is um, Southwest College of Naturopathic Medicine. This is the school that I want to go to someday, so I'm excited to tell you that they're doing great research on herbals, 30 to 40 different botanicals to check to see if they have an impact specifically on the corona COVID-19 virus. And this research is being spearheaded by Jeffrey Langland, who has over 33 experience, years of experience in virology. So it's um, actual legitimate measures of, of testing to see what we can do against COVID-19. And they haven't released any information yet, but next week they're going to have a webinar. And so hopefully next week I have some um, updated information to tell you like what, what they're doing that's working so that you know what herbs to stock up on specifically for the corona, for, for COVID-19. Another cool study that was done um, just closed. I participated in it, so I'm really excited to tell you that um, my numbers contribute to the data, yay, is the Nutritarian Women's Health Study done at Northern um, Northern Arizona University. And what it was, it was a long-term study. Um, I participated for over a year um, and other people participated longer and they were looking for the effect of G-bombs, of that super healthy diet, on the overall health of individuals. They will probably include things like viruses, but they're also looking for the occurrence and progression of other chronic diseases and, and how eating a healthy diet can protect you against those things. So um, I'm, I'm really excited to see what numbers get crunched and what they can tell us about that in the coming months. So stay tuned and I'll let you know. And um, in the area of research, some of the things that I 
wanted to tell you about the, some of the natural remedies that are out there that other people talk about but don't have any research for them, um, I was a little disappointed in that. So if you are interested in research or if anyone out there watching this wants to do research for natural methods, I wanted to see more research on um, specifically sugar and, and the effects of sugar in the body on the immune system and I want to see more research on fermented foods and how that impacts the immune system um, and our micro diversity microbiome diversity I also like the idea of contrast hydrotherapy because it's something you can do at home and proponents of it will tell you that it boosts your immune system and your white blood cell count will go up but I couldn't find any research on this so if anyone out there wants a pet project that would be a cool one would be and it and easy and cheap would be to just do a contrast water bath on someone and see if it boosts um the immune system afterwards so um that's everything that you need to know about covid and about opening our gates and opening our communities again and how you can protect yourself and your family against this epidemic Thanks so much for watching, you guys. If you liked this video, keep watching. I've got other videos on my YouTube channel that help teach you how to be naturally strong. All right. Hey, lastly, I just have to give a huge thanks, a huge shout out to my son, Jonathan, who babysat, woke up early, by the way, to babysit while I recorded this video. So thanks, Jonathan, for making this possible.